Hey everybody, it's Michelle from Florida Keys Birding and today we're talking about the downy woodpecker, the smallest woodpecker in North America. So we're going to talk about a few facts. Um, we're going to start with the ID of this bird and some distinctive markers on this bird that's going to set it apart from other similar birds. Um, there is another woodpecker that really does look a lot like this woodpecker, which is the hairy woodpecker. So we're going to take a look at both side by side. We're going to take a look at the male, the female, um, and some more information on this woodpecker. Um, so this woodpecker's bill is quite short for its head. Um, it's going to differ than the than the hairy woodpecker, which is a little bit longer. So it's got that like short, stout bill, which is uh, less than a half depth depth from the head. Um, it's also got white to uh, dusky colored back and under parts, that little strip on the back there you can see. And then it's got black shoulders, um, black and white spotted wings with white wing bars. You can see the white wing bars when it's flying and you can kind of see it here in the picture. Um, down here you can see a little bit of those white wing bars. Um, it's also got um, dark bars on the outer feathers, the tail feathers, so that's like another distinctive marker. Um, you can see a little bit of spot uh, spotting on those outer feathers. Um, and then it's got the black crown with the white eyebrow and it has some, the nasal tufts and then the male has the red nape, which the female does not. So let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail. So you can see in this picture here, um, you've got the black shoulders with the wing bars, uh, with the wings here, with the white wing spots and the white wing bars. Um, you can see down here, you've got the bars on the wings. Um, you can see the little little black um, spots on the edges of the tail down here. So this is a male. Um, this is a female over here on the right. Um, and then you can see the large nasal tufts. They've got these little tufts around the, the nose. Um, and then they've also got the white under parts. And then you can see the black spots again here on the edges of the tail. It's not always super easy to see, but you know, just look really closely if you're out identifying this bird, you know, in the woods, if you're trying to figure out whether it's a, um, a hairy or a downy, um, that's going to kind of be some good identifying markers. So look again here, we've got the male and the female. You've got the male that has the red nape and the female, she's just got the black ground, crown patch. She doesn't have that red nape like the male does. So um, this is the downy on the left here compared to the hairy woodpecker on the right. So you can see, you can really see the, the distance like with the bill. You can see how the bill is much longer for the hairy woodpecker and how the bill is much smaller and stout for the downy. And then you can see those tail feathers um, that identify it a little bit differently. You can see those little spot, spots on the white outer tail feathers of the downy versus the hairy that it's just all white on the outer tail feathers. So just looking at the birds, you know, oh, and then they're a little bit bigger, like the hairy is a robin size and then the um, downy is more of like a sparrow size. It's kind of in between a sparrow and a robin. So um, so you can you can tell the difference if you really look closely, but just at a glance that they're easy to to confuse. And so you can see this uh, this woodpecker is between the size of a sparrow and a robin. It's relatively small. It's very, very, very small. Um, so I've seen these out in the wild in migration and during the winter time here in the Keys. Um, so yeah, they're they're pretty they're pretty small. They're very, very small. I always um, I always know them by their call. I can always recognize them by that. So we're gonna play the call at the end, and then we'll we'll see what that sounds like. So the best type of feeder, if you want to attract this bird to your yard, is going to be one of these, either a platform, a small hopper, a um, suet cage, or a large hopper feeder. These are going to be best for these birds. This is going to be the best kind to be able to know, um, you know, that they'll be able to get on there and get the food and stuff like that. Um, but we also have to make sure that we've got the right kind of food. So um, the food that's going to attract them that you're going to want to put in these feeders is either safflower seed, hold sunflowers, black oil sunflowers, um, which is also great for cardinals and jays like this too. Actually, black oil sunflower seed is kind of um, 
it's, it's kind of universal, <laughs> not all, but um, a lot of feeder birds like the black oil sunflower seeds. So that's kind of a good one um, to put on your feeder. You'll attract not only downy woodpeckers, but other types of woodpeckers and other types of songbirds um, with the black oil sunflower seeds. Um, and then the suet, um, that's also a good one for a lot of different types of woodpeckers, mealworms, peanuts, and peanut hearts. So those are all going to be good to put in your feeders to attract the downy woodpecker and just other woodpeckers in general too. So what do these birds eat in the wild? Um, the downy woodpecker is going to also eat in the wild insects, mostly insects like corn earworms, tent caterpillars, bark beetles, um, apple wood borers, beetle larvae, ants, and caterpillars that live in um, different types of wood like tree trunks or maybe like old rotting wood and um, stuff like that. You know, any, any materials that maybe are on the ground that have bugs in them, you know, they'll, they'll peck away and eat stuff like that. Um, they'll also eat plant material, berries, acorns, and grains. Um, I have since seen them eating fig berries in fig trees, so I have observed this um, behavior as well. So an interesting behavior that downy woodpeckers will do in the winter time is that males and females will divide up when they're foraging, um, and it's a little bit different um, how they look for food. So males will feed more on small branches and wood stems, while females will look for um, larger branches and trunks. And males will tend to keep females out of those productive areas, um, which I don't think is very gentlemanly of them if you ask me, but um, this is what they do. And researchers have shown that um, when they remove those males from that area, that the females will go back to feeding on smaller branches. So this must be what they prefer, um, but the females are making do when the males are kicking them out of the area so um, so yeah so this is a behavior this is an interesting behavior um, that they'll tend to do so what kind of habitat do they live in so they do tend to um, live in open woodlands um, deciduous trees bushy or weedy edges um, and they can also be found in orchards city parks backyards and vacant lots um, down here in the Keys, you can find them in West Indian mahogany trees, black mangrove forest, and fig trees. So um, strangler figs, of course, the native strangler fig. So um, those are the ones that you're going to find them if you're birding down here in the Keys or in South Florida. Um, that's where you will see them. So when can you find them if you're down here birding in the Keys? Um, you can find them more in fall, winter, and spring. Uh, during migration, you're more likely to see them than out of migration. Um, that's the only time I've seen them. I've seen them usually end of September, early October, and then I've also seen them in February. Um, so according to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, it says that they're year round and they don't really migrate. But I don't know if because we live in the Keys, it's different. I have not seen them in summer. I don't see them year round um, where I'm at, but maybe where you're at, you know, you, you probably will. Um, but I know that our, um, you know, our thing is different down here. There's a lot of birds that are normally all over Florida that only come here in the fall and in the winter. So, um, but that's just based on my own personal observations. So like we said, you can find them in, you know, like woodlands and, you know, brushy areas and stuff like that. Um, I tend to find them in the mangrove forests um, in the back. I see them kind of in the same area and then I see them a lot in those mahogany trees. Um, a lot of woodpeckers tend to like those mahogany trees and stuff like that. This year was the first time I had saw one in a fig tree. This is a picture I took um, of it in the fig tree. So yeah, I mean, the, you can you can pretty much find them, you know, in the forest and in, you know, backyards and neighborhoods and stuff like that so um, but yeah I always know them by their call I always kind of find them like that I don't generally see them first birding I always hear them so this woodpecker has some interesting behaviors that we're gonna talk about um, one of them is that they have been known to drink from hummingbird or oriole feeders which makes sense if they eat fruit so they must like that sugar you know they must like that um, you know that fruity glucose syrup so they're trying to get some of that from the hummingbird feeder or maybe a grape jelly oreo feeder um, so this is something that 
some birds do. I have seen um, this in some bird behavior. There's some warblers that do this. Um, and then even, I mean, we've even seen some cardinals doing stuff like this. So um, it's something that you wouldn't expect, but um, this is one bird that you can see doing this. Um, another one is the butterfly courtship. So in the spring, you may see courtship displays in males and females that will fly between trees with slow fluttering wing beats that look almost like a butterfly. That's pretty cool. I've never seen the mating or courtship behaviors, um, but it looks, that sounds pretty neat. Um, let me know in the comments if you've ever witnessed this before. Um, so another funny behavior is um, during disputes. So sometimes when they're having a dispute with another bird, downy woodpeckers will fan their tails, raise their feathers, and jerk their beaks from side to side. That's also got to be pretty funny to see. I haven't seen this. I've only seen these woodpeckers kind of solitary on their own. I haven't seen them like interacting together as a pair or in flocks or anything like that. So um, I'm sure other parts of the US, you, you know, people have probably seen this, but I've only pretty much seen them by themselves. I've seen the red belly woodpeckers do stuff like that and be crazy and, you know, run each other off and stuff like that, but I've never seen these little guys do that. Um, so that's cool. So let me know if you've seen that as well. Um, and so another another behavior that it does is it will um, occasionally, you know, be a groundhopper. I've seen... I've seen northern flickers do this every so often, and um, I've seen some woodpeckers, but um, it's kind of not a general woodpecker behavior. So, um, you know, according to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, it says that they will do an occasional, you know, ground hopping type thing, you know, for food and stuff like that. Um, and then this one, it will generally move horizontally up and down trees and stuff like that. Um, and the flight pattern for this bird is an undulating flight pattern. So I didn't know what this word meant. I was like, undulating flight pattern, what does this mean? So I looked it up and apparently it means having a smoothly rising and falling form or outline. So yeah, that's another like big birding word. I didn't know what it meant, so I just wanted to let you guys know um, so you could kind of have a picture in your mind of, of what this flight pattern looks like. So as far as nesting and behavior um, with breeding, so it'll tend to nest in a dead trees or even building walls. Um, this, this behavior has been seen as well. Um, and then males uh, and females will both excavate the, the area and it'll usually take about one to three weeks. Um, the hole is usually about one to one and a half um, inches round and then six to 11 inches deep lined with wood chips. Um, they'll usually do one brood a season. Um, they'll do three to eight eggs. That's a lot for a bird. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, that's a lot of babies to feed. Um, and about 12 days to incubate with 18 to 21 days of the total nesting period. And then the eggs are white. And this is a low um, conservation concern. Populations right now are stable for the downy woodpecker um, and the lifespan is about 11 years. So that's the oldest recorded living bird. So let's take a minute to hear some of the sounds of the downy woodpecker so that when you're out birding and you hear these sounds, you'll know where to find it. And there you go. Those are the calls. It's pretty distinctive. Um, you can kind of really recognize it, you know, when you're out birding, you hear that call and it doesn't sound super similar to other bird calls. So, um, so yeah, so this is a little bit of information about the downy woodpecker. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned a little bit more about this bird. I hope you get to see this bird this winter um, and I hope that this bird comes to your feeder.
All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.